Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA Licensed Aerospace Technician, Airframe, Power Plant, and Avionics Certified. The date today is June 2nd, 2017. The title of this video is Gas Turbo Fan Engine Principle of Operation Refresher Course. I put together a drawing here that I scanned and then placed labels upon, identifying the component configuration and functionality of a typical twin spool gas turbofan engine. So here we have the N2 high speed compressor and turbine spool in red coaxially seated on a needle bearing around the N1 low speed compressor fan and turbine spool in green. So when, turb uh, when the starter is thrown here, it is the N2 that rotates, drawing in air between the compressor rotors and stators, causing a vacuum effect to eventually induce rotation on the N1 low speed compressor, which is also connected to the large fan and the low speed turbine. So eventually the N1 and N2 spools start to catch up to a relatively close RPM. This then draws in air and compresses the air between the rotating compressor blades and the fixed stator veins, actually stator blades, and the rotor and the stator configuration are at opposite angles to each other so that when the rotation of the compressor blades take place, the blades act like divergent airflow nozzles. This then causes the pressure of the air to increase through each stage while stabilizing the velocity. By the time the intake air discharges from the compressor, the compression itself has increased the temperature of the air by about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit by the compression itself. So that's the purpose of the compressor to energize thermally energize the air by compressing it, thus increasing its temperature. And then when it discharges out of the high speed compressor discharge nozzle, it then enters a diffuser, which further slows down the speed of the air and further increases its pressure. When the high temperature, high pressure, low, uh, slow moving air enters the flame holder and combustor with dilution holes, while the starter is rotating the N2, there's also a spark igniter that is activated. When there's sufficient airflow moving through the turbine stacks, also having rotating turbine blades separated by stators, these stators on the turbine end really direct the flow of hot gas combustion energy at the right angle. So the turbine blades absorb that thermal energy, but when there's enough starter rotation and heat of air compression, then fuel is introduced at ground idle throttle setting. This then ignites the fuel. There's a sharp increase in temperature at the turbine inlet temperature stage. While the starter is active and more airflow moves, the turbine inlet temperature then drops on a successful startup, preventing hot start of the turbine blades. And then the compression grows even greater and eventually the constant pressure builds up on the combustor section. And then the turbines absorb the combustion discharge energy and then drive the compressor to keep the process going. And eventually you hit a point where they light off because the compression is high enough to keep the fuel ignited. And then the starter is cut and so is the spark igniter. And then the engine lights off into self-acceleration. So the high speed spool's purpose is to pressurize the combustor in order to light off the fuel and keep the engine running. The N2 provides 
80% of the pressure to keep the engine lit. So the N2 acts a lot like a turbojet, discharging hot gas velocity, but then most of that hot gas thermal energy is absorbed by many more stages of low speed turbine blades, which then convert a majority of that thermal energy into torque to drive this large fan, high torque, low RPM, and then some RPM to assist in compression at the low speed compressor. This is a 28 blade fixed pitch propeller fan seated in an inlet duct with a high blade pitch. So something like this that is large in diameter with high blade pitch requires high torque at low RPM because with a high blade pitch you're going to need a higher twisting moment. So majority of the thermal energy that escapes out of the N2 high speed turbine is then converted into torque by many more stages uh, turbines. So the green N1 low speed spool acts more like a turbo shaft engine, whereas the N2 acts more like a turbo jet. When you're flying below the speed of sound, a turbo jet is not very efficient. However, when you take a majority of the thermal energy and you convert it into torque to drive a large high pitch propeller fan, then a majority of the thermal energy will become torque, high torque, low RPM. So the torque is directly proportional to how much mass air can be drawn in at high blade pitch. And then the RPM is directly proportional to the speed at which the airflow will accelerate out of the fan. But because a majority of the airflow will flow around the core into the cold air fan duct, which constricts, you need a high amount of blade pitch and torque to actually squeeze that air through an ever constricting cold air fan nozzle and then accelerate the cold air into higher velocity cold air fan exhaust nozzle jet velocity. So approximately 80 to 85% of the thrust is developed by cold air flow, large amount of cold air flow constricted through a, uh, through a tapering cold air fan nozzle flowing around a hot gas thrust stream. Between 20 and 15% of the thrust is developed by the hot gas core. So you can see that this is set up for subsonic and transonic flight applications for which a majority of the kinetic energy is harnessed into torque and RPM to drive a large propeller fan instead of wasting it out into the atmosphere. Above the speed of sound, then the turbojet is most desirable because turbojets operate purely on hot gas flow at extremely high jet velocities. It is also uh, important to know that if we took this fan duct off and reduced the number of blades, we have a turboprop open propeller. We would only have so much speed to work with, but when we put a duct around here, we're increasing the jet velocity and based off the law of conservation of momentum, a propulsion engine on an aircraft is limited to the jet velocity itself because you cannot go faster than the jet velocity or the propeller discharge speed. So an open propeller might have quite a lot of thrust, but it is limited in how fast it can go because it simply cannot accelerate the air as fast as a propulsion duct that constricts increases the jet velocity of the cold air flow. So this would allow a lot higher flight up to transonic or Mach 0.9 compared to a turboprop, which is approximately uh, Mach 0.6 or about 300 miles per hour. So this is the basic principle of operation of the gas turbofan engine. We have tw two spools, heat of air compression, just like uh, with diesel, you squeeze the air by high compression to heat it up 
so that the temperature rises sufficient to light off the fuel. So the kerosene jet fuel will light off when a certain amount of compression comes in. The compressor's job is to draw in the air, pressurize it, heating it up, high enough to ignite the fuel, and then the turbine's job is to absor absorb the hot gas combustion and convert that thermal energy into brake horsepower, torque, and RPM to drive the compressor, uh, the compressors to keep the process going. And then the rest of the thermal energy that flows out of the N2 is then absorbed into more stages of turbines, which then basically turns the N1 low speed spool fan into a turbo shaft engine. And then whatever small amounts of thermal energy that flow out make up between 15 to 20 percent of the total thrust but a majority is coming out of the cold air fan flow cold air stream around a hot gas stream both these nozzles cross-sectional area are trained so that there will be relatively similar velocity you can calculate an average jet velocity for both and they're also much quieter because the stream is cold air going into the atmosphere uh, unlike the older old school turbojets which is very high temperature extremely high velocity hot air flowing into a much cooler environment so that is the basic principle of operation of a typical twin spool gas turbofan engine thanks for watching this video like and subscribe and have a great day